Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another, well I can't necessarily call it a repair video. Let's call this one another one in the basics series. I've uh, been trying to develop a series of videos that cover the basics of diagnosis and repair and this would be one of them. Behind me, a 1999 Honda Civic. Uh, it came in with uh, coolant everywhere underneath the hood. Uh, apparently it was bubbling over overheating, stuff was spraying everywhere, it was kind of dramatic. Probably a bunch of steam, it got pretty hot. Not a happy vehicle. So what is the first thing that we do whenever we encounter an overheat problem like that? That's right, check for air in the cooling system. <laughs> yeah, and I've written about this in the articles on my website. Uh, step one normally is to uh, check for air in the cooling system. Many, 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 many overheat problems are caused by air that gets into the cooling system. Now, once you have determined that there's no more air in the cooling system, uh, the next step is to find out how that air got there. And that is the subject of today's video. And we are going to go through pressure testing a cooling system. Pressure testing is something that is done in order to uh, test the integrity of the cooling system. It's a sealed system. It needs to be able to hold pressure. So if you have a cooling system that is unable to hold pressure, it is unable to cool efficiently and its mixture will boil at a much lower temperature. Uh, also, stuff's going to leak out. And if stuff leaks out, well, that's when the air gets introduced into the cooling system. So today we are going over the process of checking, uh, pressure testing the cooling system and looking for those leaks to try and determine where they're coming from so we can complete our repairs. So why don't we get started on this Civic and try to figure out why it was spraying cooling everywhere. Okay, let's start with the tools. This is a pressure tester. Um, they come in different configurations. Mine was made by Mac. I'll post a link in the description for one for your very own self. They're not that expensive, uh, but uh, you may be able to rent or borrow one from your local auto parts store. You'll have to check with them and find out if that's the case. These are special adapters. Uh, this comes standard with just a regular you know, full-size radiator cap attachment. However, many cooling systems no longer use that type of uh, setup. So they have different adapters that you can use to deal with those different types of systems. Now, some systems don't have a radiator cap. Some systems have a separate tank, which is called an expansion tank, that's off to the side. So it's a, a plastic tank that's located somewhere else in the engine compartment. If you've got a system that uh, has a has one of those plastic containers that says something like contents under pressure, or it has an actual radiator cap on it, you most likely have one of those expansion tank type systems. And they do have different adapters for those as well. So instead of doing your pressure testing at the radiator, you would be doing your pressure testing at that expansion tank most likely. But in this case, we just have a regular old radiator. Um, I believe, I'll have to look. I believe this is the attachment that we're gonna need. There's a, a deep one like this. This one's more shallow and it sort of goes along with the radiator cap. As you can see, the one on this Civic is rather shallow. So that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use this to try to add pressure to the system. So let's go over to the vehicle and uh, get some pressure on it and see if we can find the source of a leak. Okay, here we are at the vehicle. I'm gonna remove the radiator cap. Sort of set that aside someplace. I'm gonna start by topping off the radiator. If I don't top off the radiator and I try to compress the air inside the cooling system, it's gonna take forever and it's not gonna be as accurate. So I know I said the first thing to do is check for air in the cooling system, but I know this vehicle. Uh, I've worked on it in the past and as far as air being in the cooling system, yes, that's possible, but I'm really suspecting a leak someplace. So I just wanna check for that leak. So in order to do that, I have a completely cold engine here. And instead of topping it off with coolant, I'm just gonna use water. I know that I'm gonna be servicing the cooling system anyway, and I don't really wanna waste coolant. So I'll just fill it up with water. That way I'm not out any antifreeze. Looks like it's already leaking out, so it should be an easy leak to find. Also with this test, if you do this test and it's able to hold pressure, you know you don't have any leaks in the system and you need to look elsewhere for the cause of your cooling system problem. Perhaps you've got a sticking thermostat, something of that nature, cooling fans that don't work. I've done an entire video on uh, system overheats and you can check that out. I'll put a link in the description for you. And that covers a lot of the other possibilities. But this, this video specifically deals with pressure testing a cooling system. As you can see, I just attached the adapter, then I attached the pressure tester 
to the adapter. And now I'll just pump it up. I just realized I forgot something vitally important here. And that is uh, to tell you how to determine how much pressure to add with the tester in order to test the system. And quite simply, just look at the radiator cap itself. Whatever the pressure rating is on the radiator cap, in this case it was uh, 15 PSI or 16 PSI. Uh, and that's, that's the number that I used. Uh, if you exceed that pressure, you could cause damage to the system. So the way you determine is just check the radiator cap and see what it's rated at. And as you add pressure to the system, try to match that pressure. And if it can hold that pressure, you're good. If it can't hold that pressure, well, then you have to look for the problem. And add pressure, which as you can see already, where our leak is. I'll give you a close up of that. Pretty easy to see that uh, my pressure is going right out that rather large crack in the top of this radiator. Now I don't want to necessarily assume that that is the be all end all. I mean actually Honda radiators and actually radiators of this type with the plastic tanks uh, on top of an aluminum core are, are kind of prone to this type of failure or the seam that seals the plastic tank to the core often leaks. So it's not uncommon to see this. but. Since the top is plastic here, if, if you have a severe overheat or something else that's causing an overheat, it could cause damage to the radiator. So I'll replace the radiator, I'll recheck the system, I'll recheck for the overheat, and I'll repressure test the system to make sure that the system still has the integrity that it has and that the radiator was, in fact, the only fault with the system. So you may not be out of the woods if you find something like this. So you want to make sure that you verify your repair when you're done. Okay, we're back. We have replaced the uh, faulty radiator and uh, also filled the cooling system. I haven't started it or anything yet. Uh, I don't need to uh, using these methods. Sometimes on aftermarket radiators though, uh, these things don't always fit so great. So be aware of that. Try to work within that limitation. Process is exactly the same. We're gonna Put 15 PSI on the system. Looks like that's up in this range right here. There we go. It went up really quickly, which is nice. It's also holding pressure, which is also nice. I think a good round number is if it's able to hold pressure for a good five minutes, then you likely don't have any, any leaks in the system. But looking at this and how steady this needle is and the fact that it's just staying there, I would say that uh, we fixed this car. Right, well, if you uh, suspect you have a leak in your cooling system, pressure testing is the way to go. Now, as far as finding the leak, it was fairly easy on this vehicle, but on some vehicles that may not be so easy. So some areas to check are obviously all the hoses, heater hoses, uh, connections at the firewall, uh, also the heater core. Uh, the way to check that, it's kind of difficult. Usually when a heater core goes bad, one of two things happens. Uh, the, when you turn on your defroster, the inside of your windshield will get this icky film on it and you might smell maple syrup or coolant type smell. Also the, the floorboards, particularly on the passenger side, might be a little bit wet and have sort of a greasy feel to it. So it doesn't necessarily feel like water. Uh, that one's kind of a tough one to check. Sometimes it'll, you'll see it leak out the AC drain. There's a, a tube uh, that uh, allows the condensation from the air conditioning to drain out that you can sometimes see coolant coming out of. Those are a little tougher to find. Uh, as far as head gaskets, check that overheat video. I go over the process of checking for a head gasket failure in that. Uh, so in other words, if you're, if you're looking around and you can't find any leaks, heater core, anything on the engine, uh, gaskets are another good place. Look where like the intake manifold meets. There's usually coolant that passes into the intake manifold sometimes. Idle air control valves and the hoses that go to them. Sometimes throttle bodies. They run coolant through throttle bodies. Uh, there's lots of places that could leak. There's a lot of different vehicles out there. Uh, even if you have an expansion tank type system that I spoke about earlier, the process is still the same. You want to pressurize the system. It's usually with a tool similar to what I had there. If it holds pressure, you're good. If it doesn't hold pressure, look for the drips. Uh, it's, it's that simple. Uh, but you want to top the system off before you start the test. If not, it's going to take forever to build up pressure because the air inside the system will compress as the liquid will not. 
Uh, coolant's really nice as far as finding leaks because many times when it leaks, it leaves a nice stain. So it, it lets you know where, where it was going. Every once in a while you get some strange leaks, uh, like external head gasket leaks, stuff like that. Uh, but this, this will help you find it and determine if you have that problem. But once again, uh, if you do find an overheat situation, first thing to check for is air in the cooling system. Links in the description to videos about uh, bleeding cooling systems out, that kind of thing, checking for overheats, head gaskets, all the other stuff that I spoke about, including a link to the uh, tool or a similar tool to what I used in the video that could help you. Anyway, I hope that information was useful and helpful to you. Uh, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com where you can also find useful information on any of your other repair issues that you may have. Uh, we have a welcome video there that tells you about all the wonderful features we have at ericthecarguy.com to help you solve uh, those automotive issues that you have. We're here to serve. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.